In this video, we'll talk about what exactly is task parallel library and how different it is from our normal threading. So before I get into TPL and I start demonstrating TPL and I start explaining TPL, let's first try to understand, you know, problems which revolves around threading. Now the whole point, you know, we programmers use uh, system.threading namespace or we create thread objects is because we want to run logics parallelly. We want to really, really run the logics parallelly, right? Uh, in other words, for example, now you can see here, uh, I have a very simple function here called as run million iterations. And what this function does is it actually goes and it runs a for loop million times and it does a simple concatenation, uh, you know, inside the for loop. And this method uh, run million iterations, I have, uh, you know, invoke inside a thread here called as O1. So you can see that I have created a thread object called as O1 and inside the thread object, actually I'm executing this method run million iterations. Now, just a quick note here before I proceed, in case you have come to this video directly or in case you do not have any idea of threading, what my uh, suggestion would be to go and see the C sharp threading questions and answer videos, you know, where we have talked about threading, we have talked about how to apply locks on threading, how to use mutex, semaphore, semaphore slim, uh, how to use auto reset event, manual reset event, how to do thread pooling, how to debug threads, etc. So, you know, before you go and see this video, I would suggest you to go and uh, you know, once uh, run through these videos over here so that you can understand, you know, what I'm speaking here about threading. So let's go back to our console application here. Now, what our expectation here is as a programmer is that, you know, when this run million iterations uh, method actually runs right inside this thread O1, our expectation is that, you know, this run million iteration should utilize the CPU power to the maximum. So for example, now let's say that you have a P2 machine or you have a P4 machine then my expectation would be to make this really multi-threaded. You know, I would like that, you know, from this million records, you know, half of the million records should execute on core one. Okay. And the half of the million records, you know, logic should execute on core two. And then finally, you know, all the data should be concatenated inside this X and displayed. So my expectation here is that, you know, when this run million iterations method actually runs, I would like that he should actually utilize my complete hardware power of my computer. But in reality, this does not happen. In other words, even though I have invoked this run million iterations, you know, uh, you know, inside this thread over here, what happens is, you know, this complete run million iterations for loop actually runs just on only one processor. So let me go and run the Perfmon tool. Now Perfmon or I'll say performance monitor is a tool which helps you to uh, monitor different aspects of a computer like, you know, processor, memory, or probably any application from different perspectives. Currently, we are interested that, you know, our application, how does it utilize all the four processor, right? So what I'll do is I'm going to go and, uh, you know, delete this default counter, what we have here, right? Okay, so let me just go and expand this. So I'm going to go and delete the default counter here. And let me go and add counters, which are important from the processor perspective. So currently we are interested to know that how much our processor time has been utilized, right? So I'm going to go and add all the four instances of my processor. So you can see zero, one, two, three. Now each of these instances actually represents, uh, you know, each of our processor. Okay. So I'm going to go and add, okay. So there it is. You can see now these, uh, blue lines, red lines, yellow lines and green lines, they indicate, uh, you know, all our processors. Okay. Let me also go and make these lines bit thick because, uh, you know, it is, it is looking very thin over here. So let me go to the properties here and let, let me make the width a bit thicker so that we can see things in a more clearer way. Okay. So we go and apply to everyone here, apply, 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 right properties and apply. So there we are. Uh, now we can clearly see that, uh, you know, how our processors are actually loaded. Okay. Now let's go ahead and run our application and then let's try to see that how these processors actually function. So let me go and run this application over here. Let me quickly switch back to my performance monitor and let me clear everything and let me start monitoring, you know, what it is doing. Now you can see clearly over here, all the processors are not getting optimally utilized. For example, you can see this uh, this processor one, which is indicated by the red sign here, you know, it has been least utilized or I'll say this, all these three processors have been least utilized and look here, you can see this blue one, 
that is my processor 3 p3 core 3 has been utilized to the maximum in other words you know that is getting loaded more than any other processor but what my intention was or what what i was thinking is because i have spawned a thread you know i was thinking that you know all the processors should be optimally utilized which is actually not happening right so in other words you know when we say that we are doing threading we are actually not doing threading we are actually not doing parallel execution but we are doing time slicing what do i mean by that now time slicing means context switching so for for instance you know let's say that you have a single processor here and on this single processor let's say you have thread 1 and thread 2 running so now because we have only one processor and we have multiple threads running inside it so what the processor does it it actually distributes time between those threads so for example you know let's say it will first start with thread 1 at that time it will not start thread 2 it will give its time to thread 1 it will it will execute some logic of thread 1 after that he will make a switch to thread 2 and then it will start executing thread 2 and at that time you know when he is when he has switched to thread 2 and he is executing thread 2 he will not execute thread 1 after that he will again stop executing thread 2 and switch to thread 1 so in this way you know the processor actually switches time or it actually distributes time between those threads and it keeps switching from thread 1 to thread 2 thread 2 to thread 1 so in other words actually multi threading is not happening time slicing is happening context switching is happening also one important fyi if the processor is going to switch time like this between thread 1 and thread 2 in other words is going to do a context switch between thread 1 to thread 2 and then from thread 2 to thread 1 what it means is that probably you no know, rather than increasing performance it can probably decrease performance isn't it so in other words what we really want is we want thread 1 to execute on processor 1 and we want thread 2 to execute on processor 2 in simple words you know this is what we are looking at we want that in case it is a p2 machine let's assume it's a p2 machine nowadays p2 machine you know have become quite old but let's assume that it's a p2 machine and if i have two threads running then i would expect you know depending on scenarios depending on how much loaded those processors are i would like that thread 1 to be loaded on processor 1 executed on processor 1 and thread 2 to be executed on processor 2 if you remember the previous uh, you know loop 1 million times you know which i actually looped and when i showed you the puffmon uh, counter you saw that how only one processor was getting loaded all the other processor were, were getting less loaded in other words even though i have executed my million times loop in a thread multi threading is not happening time slicing is happening right so in order to achieve parallelism what we really want is we want that our logic should get executed you know optimally on all the processors right and if you look at today's world right the way uh, you know our computers are are actually growing up you know right you know from p1 we have we are literally now come to p8 you know i have seen you know eight core processors and it will it will probably go beyond that right so the hardware is uh, you know going to be available at a cheaper cost and it's going to grow so our application should have the capability to utilize that hardware right and that's what exactly tpl does when you execute that for loop using task parallel library it will actually smartly go and execute those logic on the processors depending on who is loaded and who is not loaded let me show a demo of it now in order to implement tpl you need to first go and import this namespace here system.threading.tasks so you can see that uh, you know the tasks actually the tpl library actually belongs to the threading namespace and that is logical because at the end of the day you know task is an encapsulation over threading okay so what we'll do is uh, so once you have imported this namespace you are now ready to use the tpl library so let me first go and comment that threading code so i'm going to go and comment this now in order to go and run this run million iterations uh, one million times you know what we can do is uh, we can use the parallel dot for you know from the tpl library now you can see that uh, there are lots of flavors of parallel dot for but for now uh, very quickly to demonstrate uh, parallelism using tpl we will use the parallel dot for so you can see that you know there are three inputs needed for the parallel dot for method one is first you know from where you want to start the iteration so that is zero till where you want to go that is one million times i want to go and what do you want to run the action okay so that is run million iterations method right so i'm going to now go and run this run million iterations using the parallel dot for method uh, from tpl 
Now my expectation here is that you know this parallel dot for in other words you know because I'm going to use TPL here uh, you know my expectation here is that this run million iterations should actually optimally use my cores of my machine. So for example let's say that if I have a two core machine then it should probably run half million loops on core one and half the million loops on core two. So I would like to see now optimal utilization of my processors uh, of my machine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and run this uh, application over here and I'm going to go and track the processor utilization using the perfmon tool right so uh, let me go and run this so I'm going to go and run this and let me quickly go and jump to my performance monitor now you can see that there are amazing results here if you remember right our previous perfmon uh, data all the three cores you know were utilized less and there was only one core which was getting loaded but look at look over here you can see that all the cores are getting optimally utilized and that's what exactly TPL is for TPL you know what it does is you know it actually takes your tasks okay breaks them into pieces and then says okay which of the processors currently are loaded less and then he goes and tries to execute those logics on those processors right in other words the big benefit of TPL over threading is it will actually execute or take the maximum usage from all the processors as compared to threading you know where it had a affinity with the processor now let me rectify a statement you know which i made previously i said that you know threads have a core affinity core affinity means you know once a thread actually runs on one core it will always run on that core okay uh, but you as developers you know you can write your own logic and you can make that thread run on different cores but then you as a developer you are responsible uh, to check you know which core is less loaded then to go and divide your logical to logical pieces right and then execute those logic on those cores and whatever data you get you you should you, you are also responsible to aggregate that data finally and then give it back as a result you know to the program now definitely that is a lot of work for a developer to do right you know to go and see you know which cores are less loaded and then go and query them and then divide your task and then execute it and then sync the data etc so TPL you know encapsulates everything for you so the first big benefit of TPL over threads is that TPL encapsulates multi-core execution for you you just concentrate on your functions and methods to execute all the other things uh, parallelism across course is taken care by TPL the second benefit of TPL is thread pooling okay now this video has become quite big over here so what I'll do is I'm going to go and divide this video into two parts right so in the first part we talked about uh, you know how TPL does multi-core execution now in the second part we'll talk about how TPL automatically does thread pooling okay so in case you are running thousands of threads you know how it actually goes and uh, you know rather than creating those threads from scratch again and again it actually does thread pooling and with that it actually also utilizes your memory properly so in the second part we'll see how TPL automatically does thread pooling thank you so much